In the previous segment, Cheryl Ackeson talked about how some people tried to controversialize her reporting. And I think my next guest, Glenn Greenwald, knows exactly what she's talking about. He may well be the most controversial journalist in the business right now, and he might like it that way. Using NSA documents leaked by Edward Snowden, he has helped uncover the U.S. government's mass surveillance programs, and he's infuriated U.S. officials by doing so. Last June, right after the first leaks, Republican Congressman Peter King of New York even said Greenwald should be prosecuted for his journalism. Not only did he disclose this information, he has said uh, that he has the names of uh, CIA agents and assets around the world, and they're threatening to disclose that. But in this case, where you have someone who's disclosed secrets like this and threatens to release more, then that, to me, yes, there has to be legal, uh, legal action should be taken against him. This is a very unusual case with life and death implications for Americans. Now, for the record there, Greenwald never actually threatened to expose the names of CIA agents. Neither he or any of his colleagues have ever done so. For whatever reason, the congressman's office declined our interview requests this week about Greenwald and Snowden. But I wanted to play that clip because it's incredible to think about the distance between that and the Pulitzer Prize for newspaper and online writers. The Pulitzers are the most sought-after prizes in journalism. And last Monday, Greenwald and his colleagues at The Guardian, where he worked last year, shared in the highest Pulitzer of them all, the prize for public service. In a statement, Snowden said the decision was a vindication. Quote, this decision reminds us that what no individual conscience can change, a free press can. So what does Greenwald think? He hasn't really commented on the Pulitzer this week, but now he joins me for an exclusive interview. Glenn, thank you so much for joining Great me. Great to be with you. Where were you at 3 p.m. Monday when the awards were announced, and, and what was your initial reaction? I was, I was actually having lunch. Um, I didn't want to pay too much attention to it or to try and follow it too closely, um, but I had my phone on the table, ah. and, <laughs> and I knew that the, the hour was upon us. And, and so, um, you know, as I said, I think there was an expectation that the committee had to recognize the reporting in one way or another, and the question was going to be how. And so to learn that it was the Public Service Award um, and that it was given um, to The Guardian and, and to The Washington Post for the work that we had done was was really gratifying because I think that is what the ideal was that we always tried to fulfill, which was doing the reporting in the public service. We saw Congressman Peter King, one of your sharpest critics, right on Twitter on Monday right afterwards. He said, awarding uh, the Pulitzer to Snowden enablers is a disgrace. Anything you'd like to say back to him about that? <laughs> you know, I mean, I look at Peter King's condemnation as, as an enormous badge of honor. Um, you know, if you look at what people were saying about Daniel Ellsberg in the New York Times in 1971, which is now widely recognized as extraordinarily heroic and noble and important reporting, the Peter Kings of that era were saying the same thing. They actually were threatening the New York Times with prosecution. They impaneled a grand jury to, to consider prosecuting them. Senior Obama administration officials were suggesting what we were doing is criminal as well. And, and that's just part of, I think, what journalism is, is if you want to be adversarial to those who wield power, you have to expect that those who wield power aren't going to like what you're doing very much. And not only doesn't that bother me, I see that as, as, as a vindication that what I'm doing is the right thing. Let me play that infamous clip now, uh, now infamous clip, of David Gregory talking to you last year on Meet the Press. Why shouldn't you, Mr. Greenwald, be charged with a crime? I think it's pretty extraordinary that anybody who would call themselves a journalist would publicly muse about whether or not other journalists should be charged with felonies. For what it's worth, I, I think David Gregory knew the answer to that question that he was asking you, but I wonder if you think the Pulitzer board was sending a message with this public service award to people who may actually wonder why you weren't charged with a crime. Were they trying to make a statement by presenting this public service award? I think it made a statement, whether that was their intent or not. I, I don't know. I, I, I assume it was. The people mm -hmm. on the committee are longtime journalists and, and presumably interested in defending basic press freedoms. And, Brian, to me, this is one of the most important things that I think has happened in this story is it wasn't just David Gregory. It was this series, and, and, and it escalated recently, of not just people like Peter King, but Mike Rogers and, and James Clapper and Keith Alexander, um, allied governments in Canada, explicitly calling me uh, personally and, and my colleagues criminals for reporting on the story. And they wanted to create this climate where there was this serious possibility that those of us who were doing the reporting could be criminally prosecuted. And, and I think one of the reasons why I was willing to come back to the United States when I did is because I knew that the Polk Awards as well as the Pulitzers were this week, um, and it would make it very difficult for them to follow through on those threats. But that climate of fear was deliberately cultivated at the highest levels of the U.S. government, and I think the Pulitzer board did answer that rather me, resoundingly. Uh, 
Let me ask you about coming back to the U.S. When we've spoken on this program before, you've come to us from Brazil, where you spend most of your time. You hadn't come to the United States since the Snowden stories uh, began to be published. Tell me about that decision-making process. It sounds like the awards were part of it, but did you also seek out any assurances from the U.S. government that you would be able to enter the country freely? We did. I mean, I had lawyers working for several months, including many who have, or at least some who have, connections at the highest levels of the Justice Department trying to get some indication about what the government's intentions were if I were to try to return. And they were given no information. They were completely stonewalled. The government wouldn't say if there was a grand jury impaneled, if there was an indictment under seal, if they intended to arrest us. They wanted to keep us in this state of uncertainty. When you combine that with all the threats that I just referenced, there clearly was some risk um, of coming back. But at the same time, we just felt on principle that I was no longer going to be will I was no longer willing to be kept in a single country and kept out of my own country based on these sort of implicit threats and bullying techniques and if they really wanted to to do something I wanted to force the issue and make them do it your critics might say you've trumped up this possible threat. Did you really feel you, you, would, you were concerned about coming back, that they could actually, for example, stop you at customs and interrogate you or even arrest you? The senior official, national security official in the Obama administration is James Clapper, who repeatedly called us accomplices, which is taken from the criminal law. The chairman of the House uh, Intelligence Committee, Mike Rogers, explicitly called me a criminal and a thief and tried to convince FBI Director James Comey to arrest me. The U.K. government detained my partner for nine hours under a terrorism law. Of course it was a threat, and they wanted us to think it was a threat. We didn't concoct those statements mm. or those actions. They did that themselves on purpose to try and create this menacing climate. And I believe you have a book coming out very soon, coming out in May, right? I do. So that's one of the reasons why I intend to come back to the U.S. a lot. The, the, I think the material in the book, which includes a lot of new stories from the Snowden Archive, um, has a lot of impact for the United States. And, and I want to be able to come back and, and talk to the people most affected by that story, which are Americans. And so that's... So I thought, I thought the book was mostly going to be about uh, the reporting so far, but you're saying it's also going to have new information from the documents. Yeah, there are stories that I felt from the beginning really needed the length of a book to be able to report and, and do justice to. Um, so there's new documents, there's new revelations in the book um, that I think will help inform the debate even further. Do you feel the Pulitzer and the Polk Award and the other awards you're going to be accepting in the future for this reporting as well legitimizes the reporting in a way that might change people's minds? Maybe take a, a random person who doesn't believe the documents should have ever been leaked and maybe persuade them that they, they in fact should have been leaked? Or do you think people's minds are already made up about this topic? No, I think we've seen a lot of flux in public opinion polls where large numbers of people who originally were quite hostile to Edward Snowden and to the reporting have come to view the disclosures much differently. And, and sure, I mean, if it were just a matter of a single award, I don't think that would persuade anyone. But given that pretty much every single major journalism award in the Western world has recognized the vital importance of these disclosures, I think the accumulative effect of all of that is to convey to the public um, that this information needed to get out and it was in the public interest that it did so. And I do think that can sway a lot of people to understand why, why Edward Snowden did what he did and, and why we did what we did. Glenn Greenwald, thank you so much for being here. Congratulations again. Thanks very much, Brian. Thanks for having me.